welcome back to my channel or if you are new to my channel, welcome. Today I am continuing on with my hysterectomy recovery series and this is going to be about week six and week seven. So it's gonna be more of a loaded one. So let's jump right in. So at week six, I remember thinking that it felt like I was practically back to normal. I wasn't feeling things every single day, pinches and pulls and all that kind of stuff. And I was back to doing the things that I hadn't been able to do in six weeks. Cause six weeks is kind of like the ideal recovery time for most people, for the average woman. Of course it can go much longer than that. And it does go much longer than that. But six weeks is kind of when most people get the clear to kind of go back to life. So. It was at six weeks that I really got down and I started deep cleaning my house because for six weeks you are not allowed to do things that you do on the daily. So I was just starting to feel overwhelmed by my house, like things had kind of gotten out of control. So I was on the floor scrubbing, I was scrubbing walls, I was vacuuming, I was dusting, I was doing all the things that I couldn't do for six weeks. And it was at that point that I started to feel, I had to take breaks throughout the day. So like I would deep clean the kitchen, I would scrub and clean all the dishes and get things put away and sort through things, organize things, get rid of things. And then I would have to go lay down for a little bit because I did feel very fatigued. I felt out of breath, I felt kind of nauseous and I felt slight discomfort in the core. It wasn't anything like super abnormal or noticeable, but I did notice that I do not have the stamina that I once had, even for something as simple as cleaning the house. So I deep cleaned, but I took breaks all throughout the day. So by six weeks, I obviously had been putting my body through things that doesn't normally go through, you know, on top of stress from trauma in my personal life. So I was, you know, trying to lay certain ways and get comfortable and just tense. So by the six week mark, my body was so tense. And I have already had problems with my neck and my back previously, which results in me going to chiropractic visit visits regularly. So by that point, not having any care whatsoever, my body just was so tight and I was starting to experience a lot of headaches. I could feel that it was a tension headache because it would kind of start in my back and go up my neck into my um, head. And so I booked a massage. Now, typically I go to see the same two people at my massage therapy center and they know that I like, I need deep tissue massages. I can't do this whole Swedish, like rub my skin thing. No, I need you to get in. I need you to push out the tension. So I was prepared for that. But also while that is a little bit painful at times, it feels really good. It's kind of one of those things where some places they do, it feels just like a really intense, nice massage and other places where you're more tense, it can be painful. So I was expecting that. But when I called to make the appointment, my usual lady asked me, who would you like to be seen today by today? And I said, uh, I've not had a massage in a while. I need somebody with strong hands. So she booked me with somebody. I get there and it's a new guy. And this massage was unlike anything that I have ever done. So the first thing I did, I walked into the room and I told him, he started explaining to me, like, let me tell you a little bit about what I do. Um, I typically work like in a doctor's office, but then I work here part time and I do this special kind of massage that um, basically works with pressure points. So it's kind of like acupuncture. It works with pressure points to force the muscle or encourage the muscle to loosen up as opposed to pushing the muscle and breaking down the fiber. So because I did not have experience with that, I told him, sounds good, but I want to let you know that I am six, week, six weeks out from a surgery, recovering from a surgery. And he said, ooh, like his face immediately was kind of like, mm. And I said, no, but I'm like, I should, I've been cleared. I'm back to normal. I just want to let you know, because I don't know if anything that you do kind of will affect that. And he said that he would have to adjust his technique because a lot of his technique puts some pressure on the core, um, but that he could still work around it. So this massage was painful and it wasn't painful for my core. It was just painful for all the things that had built up for so long. So essentially what he does is he pushes a point and in certain areas of the body, it can be really painful. And he'll tell you, you know, tell me from a scale of one to 10, how painful this is. And at times it was a one, at times it was a four, at times it was an eight. 
But then the longer that he held down the pressure point, the muscle would start to relax and the pain would subside. He did this thing in my neck where typically I get a lot of massages in this area of my neck. They really work it out, but he touched an exact point that as soon as he touched it, I just felt pain radiate up to my head. That was a scary feeling because I have suffered from migraines in the past and anytime you feel pain like that in your head, it's kind of like a trigger. So I was really uncomfortable, but then the tension headache went away completely. Like it was a sharp pain at first and then it just completely subsided. So he ended up doing some core work where he like really pushed in on the side of my body and it didn't affect it whatsoever, but I felt so much better after that massage. I have already um, booked follow-up appointments, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend that if you reach a point in your recovery where you feel like you can kind of lay flat on a table, I would recommend going and doing something like that for yourself because your body really is going through a lot. But I would also highly recommend that you speak to your massage therapist, let them know that you had the surgery and go from there. By the end of week six, I started to experience um, pain in my lower right pelvic region and the type of pain that I was actually for the first time in my recovery, I was concerned. It felt like something, like I did too much of something and it pulled and it was a pain that it actually put me, I would say back on bed rest, like slight bed rest for about two to three days. I would go about my day doing what I needed to do, but then when I had any downtime, I would just go back to bed, lay down, relax, because I didn't want to further any damage. I don't think there was damage, um, but I just didn't want, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing too much too fast. And that's very easy to do at this point when you're feeling better, but your body is still not better. So I did experience that at the end of the week. And I also experienced back pain. Um, I would say a dull back pain, like the pelvic region was very sharp. It was painful, but the back was more like, I had back labor when I was pregnant and, um, or when I was going through labor. And it was kind of like that. It was just a constant aching in the back that felt like I couldn't get comfortable. And then lastly, in week six, I started to develop, I can't remember if I talked about this in week five, but I was developing maybe even more, but I believe it started mostly at week six. Acne in the most bizarre places. Like I had acne for a few days on the side of my arm in the back. I have acne on my back. I had acne up towards my neck. I was getting um, acne on the face and not in places that I usually get it, like right by my eye. So I felt like my body was probably going through hormonal changes and it wasn't anything that I was like concerned with, but it definitely was bizarre um, because I just like, I've never had acne on my arm. Uh, it just wasn't great <laughs> and it wasn't horrible. I've had worse with my gluten intolerance. I've had cystic acne and whatnot, um, but it just, it just a thing. It was in really weird places. I was getting it down on my chest. I was getting it on my arms, on my face, in places I normally don't. And the weirdest place, like I said, was up near my neck. I've never experienced that. I even had one like up in my hair. It was just really, really bizarre. I just got up really quickly to grab my post-op notes that my doctor gave me at my three-week appointment that I kept forgetting to um, bring up to you guys, but I figured I would kind of quickly go over that. I'm not going to go over what each diagnosis means just because I don't know how to, pro I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a doctor, I don't know how to like properly explain that to you, but I will kind of write them down below and give like a short little synopsis. But um, my pre-operative pre diagnosis was... <laughs> And the post-operative di diagnosis was the, same, was the same thing. Goodness, I cannot speak. But when they take out your uterus, they give you a diagnostic report or a specimen inquiry from the lab. And the final diagnosis was that I had uterus and tubes hysterectomy with bilateral salpingectomy. I had a cervix with chronic cystic cer cervicitis cervicitis and squamous metaplasia. I don't even know why I'm saying this because I can't pronounce it. It will all be down um, probably in a blog post or down in the, the box below. I had a weekly proliferative endometrium. 
I had focal serosal uterine adhesions. I had no distinct endometriosis identified. Now on the other report, it did say that there was endometriosis, but this is saying there was no distinct endometriosis in the uteri, the uterus, the uterus. Um, my right fallopian tube had benign perotubal cyst and Brenner's rest, and my left fallopian tube had benign perotubal cyst. So none of this is like super, oh, but then it says clinical history, pre-op endometriosis, post-op, same. So none of this, these things are like super, I mean, I don't want to say that, but they're not, they're not something that would cause a ton of concern, but when you see it all there together and with a tilted uterus that I also have, it kind of made me think like, well, no wonder things were always uncomfortable and irritated because there was so much going on at one time. I didn't have severe endometriosis, but I had all these like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little things going on all at one time. So my uterus was basically like a breeding ground for irritation. And I'm so happy that it's gone, but that, that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna go right into week seven because that's the basis of week six. And week seven, let's get into it now. So on week seven, I wrote that I had two days of the, the painful pelvic region on the right side. That was kind of when week six went into week seven. So I did have that in week seven for the two days the acne started to level out. So in week six, it came with a vengeance. It was everywhere, it was inflamed, it was bizarre. But week seven, everything kind of started to go away. Now my skin is back to normal in all places. I was cleared, okay, so I went to the doctor for my post-op checkup. I went for a quick three-week checkup, which is where he basically just made sure that the cuff, which is basically where they sew your vagina together, they're making sure that that isn't coming apart and things aren't falling through. It's basically holding everything in at that point. Um, but then I went back to like for a more comprehensive week six, but week seven, pre, but pro, Pro-op, what am I, pro, post-op. I am not, my brain not functioning, I'm sorry. A week seven post-op appointment. At this appointment, they checked the incisions, they um, checked inside, you know, he did all the inside checking and whatnot. So during that checkup, he was pushing on something inside of me and he was putting, he was putting a lot of pressure and he asked me if it hurt and I said no. And he told me the last time you were here before surgery, I pushed this area and you, you winced, you noticeably had a reaction and you said that that was painful. Now you have no pain because your uterus is not there. So already, even though now I can't see a big difference in the way things are, I could already tell at that point that taking the uterus has relieved some of the pain. As soon as the doctor walked in, he said, have you tried out the new, the new, I don't even remember what he said, like the new toy or whatever. And I, I was kind of like, uh, the new toy, even though I had a hint at where he was going, but I wasn't sure. And he said, have you and your husband tried having sex yet? And I said, no, like I, I kind of like laughed. I was like, I was waiting to be cleared because that's a big deal. Some people have sex before they are cleared. You break the cuff, you have a whole plethora of issues. Um, but I told him that no, I had not tried it, which I had not. And he, at that point, he cleared me for all activities back to, he said, go back to your life. So on the post-op paper, it says that I can't do things like pick up anything heavier than 25 pounds. So I'm still on like a slight restriction just in that you have to be mindful that you are still healing inside, but I can't pick up my children, but I can swim, I can have sex, I can do basic day-to-day -day activities that I wasn't able to do during the recovery period. I asked him if there were any risk I needed to worry about, and he basically just said at that point, like, what kind of risk? I said, I don't know, is there anything I need to watch for or anything I need to be careful of? And he said, well, let's do this, come back in three months, we're gonna check everything again, because, you know, for example, the stitches, on average, they don't come out for six months. So I guess in three months, we're gonna go back, check everything, and at that point, I will be cleared for normal, normal activity, like picking up my children and carrying heavy things and whatnot. Um, but he sent me back to my life, said we will come back in three months, and after that, I will have yearly checkups with him. And that same day, the kids and I 
went to the beach because again my appointments are really far away and the kids are out of school I had to drag them to my appointment um, and so I took them to the beach that day and it was one of the beaches so where we are from you have the beaches that like you park your car and the water is right there and then you have the beaches that it's like a mile of sand to get to the water and we just happened to be at that kind of beach with the really really soft sand not like the packed sand so walking from the beginning of the sand to the water I was tired I was out of breath and then the next day I kind of felt um, the, the following day I was sore my glutes were sore my legs were sore my core was a little bit sore but it wasn't anything that affected me like I was on with the rest of my day no problems and that's it for week six and week seven I told you it's packed full of information it was kind of the those are I feel like the transitional weeks where you start to feel like is this going to be a longer recovery? Is this, am I kind of getting back to normal, getting back into the flow of things? And for the most part, I, I've gotten back to the flow of things and week eight was just doing things that I will go into in the next video. But that is it for week six and week seven. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Let me know any concerns you have if you are going in for a surgery. I'm loving that so many of you are sending me emails, comments, letting me know that you've gone through this surgery. We're kind of like in a little support community together and I love that. That's why I do these videos. So until the next one, I will see you later. Bye.